Hey, welcome to yet another incredible episode here of our success, our success series and what this focus is in on for the sake of our women students predominantly, but men, you know, males can watch this too and learn a lot, is that we, we are very blessed with a very talented roster of women faculty, professionals, subject matter experts, like Professor J. Maria Waters, I always have to remember to call her Maria, it's J.D., she's an attorney, she's been practicing law for over 22 years, and she works she just got promoted, so I, I want to make sure the bio is up to date, but I'll let her <laughs> elaborate. She works as an in-house staff counsel. I previously, she's previously served as an assistant U.S. attorney, AUSA, and assistant solicitor general. And off and on since 2004, she served as an, she's been serving great with us. She's amazing. An adjunct professor and a subject matter expert at different institutions, including here at Southern Amish University Global in the areas of criminal law, civil law, law enforcement, law office management, juvenile law, bankruptcy, leadership, and judish, judicial administration processes. And naturally with all that, she's in demand. So she's on a whole bunch of boards, committees, and mentoring programs. So everyone listen up to what she has to say. She's here to tell you how she succeeded. I'm going to go off camera. Just by the way, you know who this ugly face is. I'm Dr. Jeff Zarnick, blah, 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 associate dean, Department of Criminal Justice, Southern Amish. Uh, anyway, but long story, we've been joined at the hip for forever. Ever since that, like the last 10 years, it's got to be, right? Professor, Dr. Murray, it's just great to have you. <laughs> and she does remarkable jobs and she gives you a great sense of humor because you need one, that's for sure. Um, so anyway, I'm going to let her riff away let the students know how you got to where you are and how you continue to do the things you do. Okay, thank you very much. It has been many years, many years um, since I started here at Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, and I'm just very pleased and it's a pleasure that I was invited to speak to you um, about my journey and hopefully some part of what I have to say will resonate with you or inspire you to uh, go further in your education and your professional career. When I was younger, uh, I always get asked, oh, how did you decide to become an attorney? When I was younger, I told my parents I was going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, and a journalist. And that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> you can't do them all, but at the time I thought I could. So as I got older, of course, realized I couldn't do all of them. I started participating in activities that um, were geared towards all of those careers. And one of the things that occurred, um, I started, I had an opportunity to um, be involved into a program with the local newspaper that was local to our area um, was in, in another city. And I participated in a program that they had um, and it was, you could win a prize and I placed somewhere in the program. And I enjoyed doing it, but I, I realized I didn't want to be a journalist. I wasn't really struck by it. I love to read, um, but I, I really wasn't struck at being a journalist. And so I then, as I got into undergrad, I had opportunity to um, intern, I uh, went to undergrad at Spelman in Atlanta, intern with a major firm in Atlanta due to uh, our then president, Dr. Janetta Besh Cole, her service on a Coca-Cola board. And so I, I thought, okay, I, I wanna do law school. I also had opportunity to go to medical school for a summer before my senior year. Um, and I liked it, but I thought to myself, that means I'll have to stay at Spelman for an extended period of time and retake all my science courses. And I thought, no, that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to pass on the medical. I'm going to go straight to law school, which I did do. And I enjoyed it. Um, it was it was hard. And there were a lot of people who will say they didn't enjoy it, but I enjoyed it. I made the most of the environment and knowing my professors and my fellow um, classmates. And I actually ended up in a career that I had no, no, no desire to go in. Um, when I was in law school, I was in a, a trial practice class. And the instructor told me after I finished my opening argument, he said, you need to be a prosecutor. And he was hiring uh, at his office there in Athens at the solicitor's office. And I thought, no, I already have a job. I didn't want to be a litigator. I participated in a lot of speaking contests uh, going prior high school and prior to, and even in college, uh, I had opportunity to present my senior thesis at the Citadel, but I didn't want to be a litigator. And so I told him, thank you, but I don't think so. I already had a job with one of the, the firms that I was uh, working for during the summer and then during the school year. And she was not a litigator either, but she did various things. 
Um, and, and I think they were more, they were very community service oriented. Um, and so I was going to do that. Um, but my but my instructor wore me down <laughs> and, and a couple other people said, Marie, you really need to be a litigator. And so I, I became a litigator. Like I said, I had no desire to be a litigator. Wow. And one of, <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I'm like, oh, I'm writing all this down, by the way. Just continue. So <laughs> if I laugh, no it's desire. only because of, it's no great. Desire. It's awesome. But it was a state job. And I always remember my parents were educators. They were like a state job back then. This is like I uh, graduated from law school in 1999. A state job, state benefits. Like right. things are a little different now, but th they really drilled that in. So I thought, yes, I'll go do it. And, you know, I started off and I will tell you, compared to everybody else in the office, I felt completely lost because a, a lot of them had already uh, participated, like my two classmates, they had already worked there. And so during during school or during the summer, and so they were already acclimated to the office and, and criminal. Uh, we had some other coworkers, they they had been there for some years. I was coming, I was like a I was like a duck out of water. It was it was hard, it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. And there was so much I had to learn. And I just thought, what did I do? I made a mistake. And uh, I just I, I remember just talking to a couple of officers, you know, they, they sometimes were not the most patient, especially when you, <laughs> when you didn't, when you didn't, when you could have done something, you didn't do it because you didn't know. They sometimes they weren't the most patient, but I, I really, what really happened, they liked me. And what happens is if you're, you're a, a pleasant person, there'll be somebody who who pull you to the side and say, look, <laughs> you need some right. help. Right. <laughs> and that, and that happened with me. I had somebody pull me aside and there were um, legal assistants in the office. They they felt bad for me because like she's so nice. And uh, they helped me. I, I went on ride-alongs. I was going on ride-alongs for, for so long. I, I don't even know when I stopped. And I developed a really close friendship, sort of like a, a brother's and sister relationship. Right. That they were very protective of me. But I did ride-alongs. I, what I decided to do was the only way I was going to learn was to, what I needed to do. And it was a sharp learning curve, really sharp. Because solicitors... Right. Um, dealt with misdemeanors. So in Athens, we had a split office. You had a solicitor's office, you had a DA's office. Some offices just have a DA, some counties in Georgia just have a DA's office and they right. do everything. But in Athens, it was split. So it was a sharp learning curve because you had to continuously do misdemeanors. And remember, I didn't want to litigate. Criminal, I was like, yeah, I, you know, I didn't pay much attention to you. So I was really having to learn. So I just said, you know what, Maria, you can't, you, you know, you, you can't make excuses. You can't blame this person, that person. I just did what I had to do. I went on the ride-alongs. I spent extra time making sure I got it down. I asked questions. And slowly but surely, <laughs> yeah. by the time of my, I guess my first year, that my first year was ending, um, at one point, because my boss was running for DA, I I was left, um, I was left alone in state court. When there were usually four attorneys, there was just me. Wow. <laughs> by that time, by that time, I had, you know, sped up the learning process. I had, you know, I, I just, I was that type of person that I wasn't going to fail. I just told myself, you're, you're not going to fail. You're going to have to do what you have to do to get this done. Don't blame anybody. Don't blame a judge. Don't blame this person. Just get it done. Right. And ask for help when you need it. That was a big thing. I asked for help. And so I had lots of people helping me from police officers to legal assistants, the people on the other side, the defense attorneys. I, I was not too proud to ask questions and and take advice where it was warranted. I was right. not. I was willing to do it, um, and that was really. And I did that even in education because I had parents as educators, so they were really big. You better ask questions. There's no excuse if you don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so I, that was ingrained in me. So by that time, like I said, by the by end of my first year, I <laughs> I was it. And so I had two interns, and I mean, it was it was stressful because. Um, you know, my boss wanted him to bring me along. If if he went to the DA's office, I would have been the first uh, minority female, maybe the first wow. female in the office. Okay. If if I would have, you know, if he won, which he did, and so you had somebody coming in who's going to take his place. We didn't know who that was, and yet right. I had to deal with the state court judge, who was very tough, a former legendary UJ football player. So you know, right. there was a lot. There was a lot on me, and there was a lot of pressure. But I, I handled it, and I got complimented. I, I was complimented about how I handled it. Um, because there was there was a, a person who was much more experienced than me, but the person who put me in that position said he was more experienced, but you were more organized. Mm -hmm. And you dealt with the judge better. 
because oh. you you took you took a you took the hits and you were just like okay how can I make that better whereas he would turn red he was he was a very smart guy but he would turn red and and I think would get a little shook up but he was good attorney good litigator so he that's why he put me into place instead of him which everybody okay. wondered why would you do that to her <laughs> now, so that was your, you were the first you you broke that ice you broke that ground. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, now in the DA's office, when I got to, so my boss, my form, the damn former boss won. Okay, the right. DA's office. He won the, the DA's race. He left the solicitor's office, went to DA's gotcha. office, and he okay. said, he called because he said, "I want you there." So at the DA's office, I was the first minority female, and there's wow. a question of what, whether I'm the first female. Period. There was a question about that. Not really sure. Right. I was the second minority. My mentor was the first. He was a judge at the time. In 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 Athens. He's now a, a federal judge in, okay. in Georgia. But he was, yeah, so he was the first, I was the second, for, you know. And so I remember though when he called me to say, after he won, I congratulate him. And then he said, okay, Maria, you're coming to the office. So again, nice. I'm like, I don't know. Look, I just looked up where I got this under my belt with the, the misdemeanors. And I was like, I don't know about this. I don't know if I should do this. And I was like, this is, you're talking about murders and our robbery. I was like, I don't know. I was scared <laughs> because I thought, I thought, I, I, if I do something, I want to do it well. Right. And so I'm thinking, no, this is not for me. Now, after I've already told him, okay, I'll come with you. This is this is the, the instructor from law school who said, you need to be a prosecutor, brought me onto the solicitor's office, and then said, hey, if I'm in DA, you're coming with me. And so right. I had to talk to my mentor, the Judge Jones, and I said, Judge Jones, you know, he said, well, why don't you talk to Steve? You know, that's what he said, because he he knew Judge Jones. Judge Jones was a clerk when he was a, D, a ADA there. And so I talked to Judge Jones. He goes, Maria, you can do it. You can do it. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> and he was like, and I, and I remember this conversation very well. I remember exactly where I was. And he said, you could do it. You could do it. And so I, I then went to the DA's office. Again, our, our office, when we came in, my boss had beat his former boss who had been in office for 30 years. So it was a very wow. contentious election. And so when we walked in, he's walking in, the only person who's been a prosecutor for that long was, was Philip, who we still keep in touch. And I still keep in touch with my boss. And, um, and he's, the, you know, and we're coming in. He, we were the first two hires coming from his solicitor's office. We're coming in and they took all the information out the Rolodexes. Um, there were files missing. I mean, I mean, there were there was actually oh. a lot of documentation missing. We were expected to go to court, and guess who? And then he hired somebody else. And guess who he decided would go to court first? You. With five hundred cases on the docket. Wow. And so I had look. I only had a few couple of weeks. And so and the reason why I'm laying this out this way is yeah. to show perseverance and right. be dedicated and saying, look. You know, even even if I wouldn't have done a great job, my thing was at least she tried, and that's the only thing I wanted somebody to be able to say. I didn't want to make excuses. I didn't. I, I always was like, what do I need to do, and who do I need to ask? And I'm going to that person to ask. That was my mentality, um, okay. because those 500 cases, there were files missing. Like I said, they didn't leave anything in the rolodexes. There were things that weren't on the computers. There was. <laughs> It was like they stripped that office. There was nobody, nobody left over from the other office. There were there was somebody we they he hired who came back an investigator. But we're coming in with nobody and we're having to go to court. You know, they, they have court. My judge, who's my mentor, you know, he didn't have court court, but the first one to go out of court in terms of the big docket was me. And I had 500 cases. And I had I only had so much time to figure it out, to figure right. out where these files were. If they weren't there, I had to hunt down things. Oh. And so yeah, it was it was, oh, oh and that that's not the only thing though. So oh. right? so I'm asking questions. Luckily enough, the old office didn't want to help us out. It, like I said, it was a very contentious race. Um, because I clerked for the judge, some of them had seen me, some of the people in the office, they had no problem with me. They were always very nice. They, the judge's secretary, talked to one of them and said, Would you be willing to help her? And they said, Yeah, we'll help her. But they couldn't do much, but they told me what they could. And so um the defense attorneys remembered me, knew I was a nice person, and they tried to help me out as well. So we were just trying to, you know, figure things out. I was very right. lucky that I had some very good, um, I would say, countries and truthful people I had dealt with when I was doing misdemeanors who who were very truthful and very honorable, had integrity, that they right. weren't trying to, you know, and the judge made sure he had a meeting to tell them, you're going to treat her. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he, he did that after though, you know, they, they were good. So we went to court and in court that day, the newspaper, the news media was there. Okay. Right. And somebody from the old office 
set his chair in front of the door, in front of the door, in a part of the door where he was looking right at me and he was staring at me the whole time. Oh. Uh, he was there. And he had not, he didn't have a case at all. And eventually the judge stopped to tell everybody, like, you know, Ms. Waters has done a great job. And the inmates who are in shackles stand up and try to stand up and start clapping for me. It was hilarious. And so the attorney <laughs> said, the attorney said, well, did she let them all go? The judge was laughing. He goes, no, some of them are going to jail or going to prison. So I'm getting a you know ovation from the, the inmates over here. Wow. And, and the guy is still sitting there. And eventually the deputy went over and talked to him and he left. Right, 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 right. So this is what it was like for me, but that that's what it was like. And I God, had many pressure. other moments like that. So to get through that, those first years right. uh, where I, I knew nothing and I was scared, perseverance, having a mentality that I'm going to get through this. And I yes. always had in my, I always had in my mind, okay, if I don't get through this, what's plan B? Because sometimes things don't work out. Right, right. What's plan B? Um, and always ask questions because, I, like I said, educators for parents. If I, I want to know something in undergrad or law school, it was very strict at Spelman, very strict at UGA, very okay. strict. But I asked questions. I, I want right. to ask questions, and which a lot of people don't, a lot of students don't do. Wow. And I'm always amazed because I just, like I said, it was ingrained in me. Um, and I remember my professors would say, you know, we, we wish more, you would get more of your classmates to come ask questions because, you know, if you don't know, it, you know, you got to, you got to, and be specific in what you want to know. Yeah. That's another thing. Okay. So when I want to ask people for help, if I just want to say, I don't know what to do, they would have been like, well, we don't know what to tell you because you're not telling us what you, what you don't know. So right. I had to be specific to say, I need help with this. I don't understand this specific thing. I wrote this, but I'm not sure. Um, and I had to learn how to do briefs really quickly. Like when oh, you start yeah. to people, you know, so I had to learn how to write briefs. I had, there's a lot of things I had to learn on my, on my own too, ah. that, I, that I didn't go ask people that I had to figure out okay. quickly. And, and during trials, you learn a lot figuring things out quickly. And I will say tr transitioning from civil to criminal, criminal to civil, I got to the point after I was with the feds, I was there close to a year. I, I just thought, this is not what I want to do. The office, that particular office was not, it was not like the other offices. Okay. And I had gotten offers, um, uh, again, my mentor, who now this time is a federal judge, was like, "Why don't you you think about coming this way?" And I said, "No." And I had people, <laughs> when we went to the when we went what we call the, the the federal college, the NAC. They call it the NAC, and the okay, Carolinas. Okay. There were people who were like, "Oh, you know, I was I was people like, oh, would you think about coming here? Would you because you can move even if you're not barred in that state, you can move around because you're representing right. the United States as long as you're barred." Ah, any right, 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 right. And I I I was like, "No, I think I'm done." And people, everybody was like, "Are you sure?" And I was like. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hang it up. After 13 and a half years, I'm gonna hang it up. And they were just like, we can't think of you not being a prosecutor, and we need more prosecutors like you. And I thought, yeah, because I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hang it up because right now with the social justice movement, you know, it's a right. big movement now. Right. Well, right. there are things I was doing before there was ever a social justice movement. Let me tell you, they were harder to do because right. sometimes all you know, right. you know, all this is sometimes didn't like when you try to do the right thing. <laughs> Uh -huh. they, they wanted, and, and you understood. Yes, Sometimes yes. you had to let somebody, somebody you knew, was a bad person, but you didn't. It, it wasn't the case to do it on. You know, it, it would have made yeah, right. it compromised you. And and my thing, to officer, it compromises you too. The, yes. the decisions I made then and things I was doing then are now what's considered now social justice the right thing to do. So we were doing right. those things when it was before hard. It was, before it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Before, right. it was, yes. before it was cool, and before it was on social media, it was harder. Because right. you had you had pushback from people, you sure. you know, and I just I didn't want to cut corners, and I didn't want to, um, I just I just didn't want to cut corners or do something that was unfair. I, I I tried to look at it. I want somebody to do things the way I would want them to do if I was the person right. on the other end. And so you that's mean, how what, that's how compassion. It was. You want yeah, what? It, it can be difficult. <laughs> it's hard. Though. It is hard. It's it's difficult. It's complicated. It can be complicated. It can be difficult, and you have yeah. to navigate. Orders. And I didn't like it sometimes. Sometimes it left a bitter taste in my mouth. It really did. But, you know, I, I knew it was the right thing to do. Right. But Principles. I hated it. I hated it. But when I made the decision to go from criminal to civil, that was another curve because, I, you know, civil, what? I, you know, I, yeah, I, right, right. In, in law school, you know, working at that big firm, one of the biggest firms in the nation at that time. I mean, but I didn't, I really didn't know anything about what I'm doing now. Like insurance defense, I was like, I knew nothing. I had to learn really quickly because of the cases they were handling me, handing me to do. Um, I had to learn really quickly. Another quick learning right. curve. 
but but at least I had litigation experience, at least I already had experience as attorney doing brief research. So those things were there, but the aspect of the law and applying it, it's it's very it can be difficult when you're thrown in. And right. so that's uh I, I was wow. saying wow that, that, holy that's mackerel. My story. <laughs> that is anyway, I took some notes, so I'm gonna reiterate. One thing, and these are things that stand out to me because I'm a lifelong learner, is that you love to read. Oh, I do. So I want students to listen to that. She loves to read, okay? Which means sustained reading. She wanted to be a journalist. She went to law school, thought about med school. Learning, learning, learning. Enjoy the environment. But you want need to be, you were told, you were mentored, per se, pushed, prodded, and cajoled into becoming a prosecutor. But <laughs> what I found is you, your drive, your grit, your perseverance, your courage, to break new ground, to do something you weren't familiar with, a lot of people would retreat from that. So students in the classroom, if you want to retreat from an assignment, I want you to listen to this and listen to it twice, maybe three times, because Professor Waters is living proof, okay, that yes, your education will carry you, but at the end of the day, it's all about what you have inside your heart, your drive, you are very well liked, which means you have a, a great personality, which just goes without <laughs> saying. But that means a lot. You have great social skills, which people, if they don't always have them, they have to understand that's very important. You've got to play well with others in the sandbox. I saw no excuses, and you asked questions. You were very specific about these questions, and you did not want to fail. You were deathly afraid. To me, I'm going to interpret this as you're deathly afraid of mediocrity because all the gifts you've been given and how you wanted them to come to their total fruition, you were, yes, this is a highlight. Listen up, ladies. The first African-American female in the DA's office. And it's one thing to be that. It's another thing to manage it and handle it because I'm sure you were, the spotlight must have been <clears throat> tremendous. Plus, you had to deal with missing files. You had 500 cases. So if you have to write an essay in a discussion board this week, think about 500 <laughs> cases. And some of the files were missing. <clears throat> uh, think about that. <laughs> Two weeks. So perseverance, dedication, effort, drive, and have a plan B. Have a backup. Be a realist. Not everything is going to go your way. Great support system. People loved you. They praised you, which always keeps the fuel going. And Mates Clapper, I thought that was incredible. So that speaks volumes about the kind of person you are, that you are a whole person, not just about the job. The fact that everyone really basically lauded and applauded and supported your work. Then just reiterating, always, always ask questions. Be specific when you ask. Learn because you have to. And you learn on your own, independent thinking, depending on yourself ultimately. And also to be principled, compassionate, and fair. Did that sum it up? That summed it up. I took good notes, <laughs> everybody. Like, That's another one. <laughs> I use my hands a lot. So. <laughs> well, no, but yeah, you, well, you're making great points. This was great. This was outstanding. So I'm going to upload this to YouTube. Everyone, thank you once again, okay, to Professor Attorney. <laughs> I would say Maria Waters. I mean, that's what makes her happy, right? It's Maria J, Maria Waters, JD, blah, blah, blah. I was going to say, don't, don't call me that. Call me Maria. Okay, I got you. But uh, it's been great to um, work for and with you. And uh, Kid City, a dear friend, you're amazing, amazing. And uh, if if ever you want to sell any of your DNA, let me know because I'm sure <laughs> a lot of students could use a little bit of that, you know? Absolutely. You want my, my parents' DNA more so than mine. <laughs> my educators, well, you know, it's funny, I rang a bell because my, my, my dad was too, and then they went to publishing, and my mother was training to be a teacher, but then I came along. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> you know, um, but they, yeah, the same thing. So think about that, your support system, your parents, your friends, your family, you know, um, they're not always wrong, you know, and that I was wrong. So what they imbued in you, the drive, the persistence, the support, you were definitely certainly loved. And so we love having you. And if you ever leave here, I will find you. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to all the students. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Any last, uh, any closing uh, words, any closing arguments, counselor? No, 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 just good luck to everyone and just do yeah. your best. Thank you. And thank you again. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks everybody for listening and have a wonderful weekend, weekend, month and all that sort of thing and be safe. <laughs>